So welcome to a new episode of the AfriTech Connect. And it is a space where discussions unfold to explore the forefront of spatial technology, project management, inclusive leadership, and wellness. I would like to remind you all that the AfriTech Connect is a space for all of you, the AfriTech alumni, the AfriTech community, but also all of you who are present here tonight. So today's core theme will be project management. And the title of this episode is Creative Engineering, Unveiling Project Management Secrets. I'm excited to introduce our esteemed panelists who bring a wealth of experience and expertise to our conversation tonight. Each of them has mastered the art of project management in the engineering field and brings a unique perspective on the intersection of creativity, engineering, and innovation. So with us tonight, we have Keshna Bargobin. Passionate about technology and problem solver at heart, Geshna started her engineering journey in 2015 at the University of Mauritius. Nine years later, with a master's degree in project management, she is currently leading a pivotal digital transformation project at MTEL Limited. Her goal is to positively impact people's lives with technology, inclusive leadership, and kindness. Thank you, Geshna, for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, and thank you, everyone, for spending your Friday night with us. We will also have with us tonight Navisha Govarden. Navisha is a network architect at Antel Limited with a bachelor's degree in electronic and communication engineering, as well as a master of business administration. Her expertise is designing and managing network infrastructure and has also managed more than 10 FTTH projects. Navisha's passions include continuous learning, sustainability, and public speaking. Welcome here, Navisha, and thank you for spending this time with us tonight. Well, thank you, Angel, and uh, for AfriTech team for creating this safe space, AfriTech Connect, and providing me with the opportunity to be part of the discussion. Also, I would like to thank all the guests. So I can see some friends and family here to on a Friday evening to be part of this discussion and connect with us. Thank you. Thank you. And it's true. Thank you to all of you who chose to spend your time with us tonight. So just to ensure that uh, you know how it goes and to ensure clarity through the session, I will just explain briefly how the session goes. So we... Actually, we'll start with a, a list of questions that I will ask the guest speakers tonight. And after those questions that they will answer accordingly, you will have an additional 10 to 15 minutes to ask questions to our guests, but also to add on on what we, we shared. Maybe you have your own comments or your own experiences and that you would like to share with us. So you it will be the time for you to share it with us. So without losing too much time, we will start right now with Geshna. So Geshna, how does creativity influence your approach to project management within the field of engineering? That's an interesting question. And if you look at creativity and engineering, you think, but what does engineering have to do with creativity? But look closely and you'd think that the two are actually intertwined and the greatest innovations the world has known has actually come from the two. And now how, as a project manager or project engineer, do you infuse creativity in your day-to-day? -day? One way for me to do it is through storytelling. And let's start with the story because storytelling. So I work for a telecommunications company, Amtel, and we usually deploy fiber cables. And these fiber cables have to be adequately labeled. And traditionally, we use um, plastic tags on which you write with a permanent marker. The problem is with time, that label fades, and you can not even read what was written there. So I came up with a solution is to use NFC tags. NFC tags work like your debit card or credit card. So you just have to tap it on your phone, write the label and save it, and it would store it. As much as I was proud of that idea, the project failed at visibility stage because the narrative was not the right one. Instead of focusing on what 
problem I was solving or what impact it would have, I was telling the story of how much additional work everyone has to do. And that was a lost cause in itself. All that to say that as a project engineer or as a project manager, you can have the brightest of ideas, but if you don't tell the story right, your project would not even start. So that can only be done with effective storytelling. And I'll give you a little tip here is the, ep the EPIC framework. So the E stands for empathy, understand what your audience is feeling, is thinking, what are their apprehensions? P for purpose, what is the purpose of your idea? What is the purpose of your project? What is the message that you want to come across? I for insight, what data do you have to support your claim, your project, your idea? And conversation, it's a two-way, it's always a two-way. So always take into, the con into consideration the feedback, the perspective of your stakeholders. And so that's for you, the EPIC framework. Another way of doing that is, through, of course, problem solving. And there is this quote from the former CEO of Intel, Andrew Grove, who said that, let chaos reign and then reign in chaos repeatedly. To say that problems are always going to be there, but they're also the catalyst for growth and innovation. So tap into the opportunity known as problems and learn and grow. And whenever you're faced with an obstacle or a problem, if you're learning something, that's a win, that's a growth for you. So don't be bogged down that I'm having a problem. So that's an opportunity for, to learn. So whatever happens, never give up. Use the EPIC framework for effective storytelling and embrace problems as an opportunity to grow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keshna, for sharing this with us. And this was a great example of how sometimes we are trying to solve a problem, but we don't really realize what, uh, how it will impact people around it. And that's very nice. But also, thank you for sharing this EPIC framework with us, because I didn't know about that one. And I'm sure it's really easy to remember because it's EPIC, <laughs> like the word itself says. And um, thank you so much for this. So we'll go on with Navisha now. So... Navisha, can you share a project where creativity played a vital role in its success? Thank you, Angel. So I'm going to reflect back, as Krishna mentioned, why we need creativity. Creativity is an important aspect for the success of a project, as it allows us to think out of the box and to come up with new or innovative solutions to a complex or even simple problems. It, allow, it gives a project to differentiate itself from the competitors, and we are able to create new products and services according to the needs or preferences of, a, of the end users. And one project uh, which is very close to my heart and for which success was an important factor for its success is Tresor. Well, besides being someone from the engineering field, I have always an entrepreneurial mindset due to my parents. Therefore, in 2019, I founded Tresor as a part-time job where I used to purchase set of earrings and headbands to resell them online on social media, Facebook and Instagram. However, after the COVID-19 pandemic, I had to halt the operations of Tresor due to the high free costs and low profitability. But at the same time, my parents who own a tailoring business in my village was much more impacted by the pandemic. As customers were not going out of the home and sometimes there were no other ladies. Therefore, I come up with a solution that if the customers can't come to us, we are going to be closer to them. And this is how we decided to offer online tailoring services for the page Tresor. And the concept uh, with uh, the customers can choose from a pool of models what they want uh, as um, as design and from that select uh, their fabrics also from a wider variety and it will be tailor-made according to a size which will also be selected from a measurement chart 
or even they can provide their own measurements. And the telemetry causes will then be posted and delivered to them within two to five days. And in that project, from dealing with the suppliers and learning marketing, social media marketing, packaging, delivery, and in two weeks, we were able to sustain our business, the delivery business, did everything was normalized. And to summarize, uh, a project can run smoothly on the normal operation, but the risk and issues are inev inevitable. And it is at that point where we need to be creative to create that competitive edge. Thank you. Thank you so much, Narisha, for sharing it with us. And uh, on top of being a very creative and a real story, it's also a proof of how resilient you were. And I think resilience is also a very important point in uh, problem solving or project management, because here, as you mentioned in your narrative, is that it was not only solving your problem as an entrepreneur, but also the, uh, for your parents. And for the, at the end of the day, for the uh, customers as well, who could not have uh, their um, uh, purchase anything else if they didn't have this. So thank you for sharing it with us. And I think it was a great example again. So now for the third question, it will be open to both of, the, of our panelists. So it's, the question is, what are some of the unique challenges you face in project management within the engineering field? And how do you navigate them while maintaining project integrity and efficiency? So maybe Geshna, if you could go first. Yeah. Um, challenges in engineering projects often come in the form of technical challenges. And if I'm being honest, I love challenges. I think for me, that's what makes the whole journey worth it. I've learned the most during those moments of chaos. And those moments really challenge you as a person, but also as a leader. But more than that, the technical issues for me, my biggest challenge has always been stakeholder management, is how do you get different people from different backgrounds with different um, priorities to move towards that specific goal that is your project? And how do you make them engage towards the vision of your project? And if I can take a personal example here, so, End of 2022, I was working on the Tribeca Mall project, and those in Mauritius would know the Tribeca Mall. And those who are not in Mauritius, you can just Google search Tribeca Mall of Mauritius, and you'd see that it's the biggest mall of the country. And six months before its opening, I had to deliver fiber there. And that's a huge challenge in itself. And you'd think that, yes, time management and resource management are important to make that project be delivered on time. But I think the key was stakeholder management, because for me, I had to make sure that my team is aligned with that vision and we could meet that deadline. And also to have people in that mall were already working and they'll even work for my company. So how to make them help me? So that's good. That's only that can only be done with good stakeholder management. And for me, what has worked is being kind with my team and always trusting in my team. And also, I think if you're passionate about what you do, it kind of becomes contagious and your team reacts to that passion and hopefully with passion. And I'm grateful because my team did react with passion and we were able to finish the project on time. And that's one of my greatest achievements, I would say. And so for me as a project manager, stakeholder management is the most challenging and rewarding part of my job. When I'm working with people is when I derive the most joy. And it's the sharing of ideas and understanding the different perspectives. So it's always important to be open to the new perspectives, be kind to your team, no matter what is happening. And I think you'd overcome any challenge that comes your way. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Keshna. And I think you're right when you say that um, sometimes if something is too easy, it can really get boring, like quickly. So like having challenges, of course, sometimes challenges are very big and it's very tiring, but I think having challenges gives you a point of view to exactly like Geshna said, having other perspective, because sometimes we're doing something for so, so long and for how many years we think we know everything about this because it's always been right. But then when there is a challenge that you're facing, then 
you realize that, oh, well, you did not take that perspective into consideration. So I think that's a really great point here. And though it, re it is really relevant to project management and engineering here, it's also relevant, I think, to any field. So thank you. And Navisha, what would you say? Uh, for me, I love challenges also. <laughs> <laughs> I think when there's challenges, it's automatically we need to be creative. <laughs> and so I, I reflect on what Gishan has said, stakeholder management is also a huge challenge, especially when you have to deal with lots of stakeholders, the contractors, customers, suppliers, can be quite uh, chaos sometimes. And to add on top of that challenges, um, my, there are two challenges I will talk about. Firstly, um, the complexity of managing multiple projects at the same time. In my youth area of work, I manage more than four or five projects at the same time. And each one has their own complexity and durations. Uh, for example, I have to deliver an FTT action project, such as delivering a more project in one month, the other one in two months. And I'm also working on an automation project, testing new equipment. So it's quite, it might be quite cumbersome to manage all these projects at the same time. And uh, to ensure the project integrity and efficiency, the most important part is communicating. I think communication is the heart of project management. It is important for all the stakeholders uh, from the field teams, um, the contractors, the management, the customers, all to be aligned of, uh, on the goals on what need to be achieved and by when. And besides communicating clearly, I also ensure that uh, uh, I set realistic uh, timeline and delegate. It is important to delegate. We cannot do everything on our own, even if I am a perfectionist. I tend to do everything, but we should delegate. By communicating, delegating, setting um, the right uh, timeline, the right resources at the right place, we ensure that each project has the required resources to be completed within the time. And secondly is time, manage as time management, especially when faced with tight deadline. We suddenly got a project and we need to de deliver that within that one month. And for that, it is important to implement the time management strategies, um, to set realistic goals, to break the tasks again into smaller ones and monitor. At the end, it is important to continuously monitor the projects of what it is, what stage it is, uh, to avoid any risk issues and any delays. Uh, so that's all for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Navisha. And uh, yes, those are very difficult challenges to navigate through because I think I will take the time management one, but I think it kind of uh, interlinks within each other, the time management and uh, uh, several projects to manage at the same time. Because if you have several projects to manage at the same time, you have to get the time management right, because if not, then both of them are just gonna crumble. So I think it's really like two very big challenges, but um, I've seen uh, both of you, you and, uh, and uh, Geshna navigating through all you already do and through the Afrotech fellowship. And I can see that you have great time management. I sometimes struggle with it, <laughs> but I try to do my best to manage it to the top potential. And I think I try to stick to the SMART framework to set my goals because then it's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Because that's, for me, what I think kind of solve both of, both of those challenges in one way by sticking to this framework. So thank you so much. And um, we will go back to Geshna. 
now for the next question, which is, how do you strike a balance between structure and innovation in highly technical or regulated environments, such as engineering? To answer this question, I'll start with safety. As engineering professionals, there's one thing that is at the core of anything that we do with safety. It's ensuring the safety of your team, the people around you, the society at large, and also your own safety. And also your ethics or what guide you to do the job that you do when you have to always, always stay true to your ethics. That being said, for me, whenever I'm faced with doubts about a solution, about an idea, about a project, I've always been lucky enough to have great mentors and senior engineers who have guided me and supported me. So I would say if you're unsure about anything, ask questions, never be afraid to ask questions. Each and every question asked is an opportunity to learn. And so surround yourself with people who support you, guide you, and really help you grow. And I think I've been, I would want to repeat this, I've been fortunate because since very early on in my career, I've had fellows, seniors who have guided me, and these are the people who have helped me grow. So if you have those kind of people in your community, in your um, around you, they really help you make the right decisions and, and whenever you have a doubt you know that you're in a safe space to raise your questions raise your concerns and you will have a reliable answer and Navisha herself has been my senior so thank you to you as well Navisha and I think thank you to all the mentors and seniors and fellows that I have because they've really helped me become the person I am today so yeah that's what is my approach whenever you have something difficult you would know it as an engineer, but also rely on the people around you to get the right answer. Thank you. Thank you, Geshna. And uh, I like that you uh, chose to specifically uh, the, the word safety, because safety has like a paramount importance in various parts of our life. And it's key to, to so much. And um, it's often something that we forget about. And like you said, as an engineer, it's something that should be like the first point to um, to any project that you're working on to know how it's gonna be safe, not only for your team, but also for everyone who's gonna be uh, in contact with what you're creating. And um, I think to bounce also on what you just said about mentors, I think it's really important as well because they are the people that will, like you said, tell us when we are wrong or right, but also put us back on the right path. But it's also the person that make it easier for you to accept that you may have limitations. Because in this society where we live, it's often seen as a weakness when we agree that we have limitation and that we need help to do something. And I will say it, it's even worse when a woman asks for help because us as women, we already have the society's pressure. So we want to do everything on our own, but sometimes it's um, independent of, uh, of what we can do. It's something that we need help for and we are scared of asking help because we think it's a weakness. And I think having those mentors not only give us an opportunity to know what to do next, but also give us a safe space to accept that, well, for this point, I think I'm gonna ask for help. Maybe next time I won't need help because that first time I asked for help. So thank you so much, Geshna, for sharing this with us. And um, so the next question is for Navisha, which is in your experience, how has integrating creativity into project management contributed to long-term project sustainability and stakeholder satisfaction? And what lessons can others learn from this approach? Well, as mentioned earlier, um, creativity is an important aspect for uh, the success of a project. But as a saver, it's also important for long-term sustainability and stakeholder satisfaction. And for that, I would like to take an example. 
Uh, last year, I participated in a, a national leadership engine, annually organized by NPCC. And in this program, uh, we were required to create a community-based project. And I had the privilege to be the team leader of, um, of a group of inspiring women from different generations, from 18 years old to 50 years old. Uh, in my district, Savan. And together as a team, we have to think creatively. And we were constantly pushed by our mentors to think out of the box, to think creatively, and to think, to have a human-centered design thinking. And together, we decided to tackle uh, the plastic waste and agricultural waste in Mauritius. As a result, our project was to make a biodegradable planting pot uh, made from discarded banana stems. That these will, the discarded banana stems will be used to make the planting pot. And this planting pot, we can plant it directly with the siblings, siblings in it into the soil, acting, like, acting later on as a compost. And during that project, uh, long-term sustainability and stakeholder satisfactions was one was to our main focus. Uh, firstly, for the long-term sustainability, our focus was to uh, to to decrease the plastic and agricultural waste, and this will lead in a decrease in the plastic uh, pots and also the accumulation of the plastic agricultural waste in the landfill. We all know um, the impact of uh, plastic in the environment, but we are little aware of the agricultural waste, in, uh, especially accumulation of these waste in the landfill, as this also contributes to the release of greenhouse gases. And with this long-term sustainability, we have to think about something which will be an alternative to plastic and at the same time, we'll decrease the agriculture waste and make it biodegradable and more sustainable. And in order to make, to, the aim was to, to make a more cleaner and greener environment. And secondly, for the stakeholder satisfaction, uh, this project will have been uh, beneficial to the banana planters, as they now know where to uh, give away the, uh, the discarded uh, waste, and also the planters, uh, the community, and the local and the local community, and also the garden lovers. And uh, to from this approach, George. Um, personally, I have learned how creativity and having a human-centered design thinking can lead to, to long-term sustainability and uh, stakeholder satisfaction. And also, so this project has um, very much deepened my commitment to environment. So I encourage um, anyone to, to look at the project uh, creatively, think out of the box. There's always something, uh, if it's not greener, cleaner, it is always more beautiful outside. Thank you. Thank you so much, Navisha, for this project that you shared with us. And it's a great project. And I think it's from the ecological activists within me. I'm so proud that uh, people are thinking about those those projects and as you said it was not just you but it was you and people from your community that worked together to create this and I think that's great and maybe it's, it's hope it's hope for this little planet of ours so I'm very happy for this and I think like you said um, critical thinking is very important when uh, creating a project or having to uh, create a program because for us I would take uh, us for example with Afritech it was always it's always evolving 
because we had the first cohort, then we have a second cohort. But if we didn't try to review how it went and have a critical thinking about our own project, it can be very difficult to to go and like to improve. So that's a great point like that you said, like for example, for your project, you didn't only think about what uh, what is needed or what people need to go and plant, but it's also a very great point for people, like you said, who are banana planters because now they know where to discard these, these that are too much on their land. So now they have they, it's solving a problem on one side and becoming a product on the other side. So and it's all of this thanks to design as uh, human centered design thinking and critical thinking. So thank you so much with for this example because it's a great one. And with that, I will go again for a question that's open to both of our panelists tonight which is what advice would you give to someone interested within the project management or engineering field? So maybe um, Keshna? Yeah. Um, so my advice to anyone who would choose the engineering or project management field is first passion and grit. You have to be passionate. I think in any job, you have to love what you do because that's the only way it's going to be worth it. And two, opinions and feedback. Um, people like to give up their opinions, and especially as a woman in tech, there will be people who will tell you that as a woman, you cannot do this. As a woman, you cannot do that. And these opinions can really bog you down. And it's only human to be bogged down by those kind of opinions and feedback. But always get back up, dust off your shoulders and march forward, always. Because people are there with their opinions. They don't think what impact it's going to have on you. But be strong and always, always, always get back up. Rely on your community. Rely on your friends for that support. But always, always, if you believe in your dreams, if you believe in your abilities, especially as a woman in tech, always keep moving forward. And thirdly, community. I think if I take the list, this anecdote of a little child who looks at the horizon, you'd think that the sea ends there. And I think for me, before the FP Tech Fellowship, it was like that. You'd, you'd think that that's the ocean of opportunities and it ends at the horizon. But actually, there's a whole world to discover. So really, being in communities that support you, that really guide you, you'd see that you have a lot of opportunities. You can tap into all those opportunities. And it's so important to have a community around you. And it can be the Afrotech Fellowship, because I think we'll start again in next year. And or it can be women in tech, if you're a woman in tech. So choose those, those communities, be among those women who believe in you, who uphold you. It's really important as women to have that community because this is the way you can expand your horizon, you can help each other and you can really grow in your career. So that's for me the top three advice that I would give to anyone who would choose engineering or actually any field, it applies. <laughs> Thank you, Geshna, those are great 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 advice i wouldn't i couldn't have said it better um because i think you took very great examples but also as you said as women there's a lot of pressure again it's it's all around us in society but um we've seen it i've seen it firsthand as a woman in stem how people would just assume that you cannot do it but like um Geshna said, and like others said through the different episode of After Tech Connect, is it's okay to fall down. It's okay to take a feedback and to, like Geshna said, to be bugged about it because you're only human at the end of the day. But always stand up and level up because you owe this to yourself. You owe this to maybe that little girl or that you were and that looked at looked up at those dream jobs and were like, I want to do this one day. So you owe it to that person to go up and like to always level up no matter what people will throw at you because you know who you are and you know your aptitude. So just go for it. So thank you, Geshna. Now, Sha, what would be your advice? Um, well, the, 
the world of uh, project management and engineering is very dynamic and interesting, but it also comes with uh, there's lots of learning, there are lots of successes, but also there's lots of failures. And if you want to do what you want to do, you have to gather the knowledge and skills required. But at the end, what matters more is that you're doing something that you love. And this is what you want to do without any pressure, without any expectations from anyone. So whatever, just like you say, whether any feel, you have to have that passion and you have to just follow your dreams as you only have one life, you only live once, you just go for it. And at the end, what matters is only you. So just go for it. And, and if you want to do something, just do it. There's no limitation, there's no sky. The universe is very false. So I reconsider to just go for it, let go any expectations. And I would like to end with a quote from Lao Tzu. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one single step. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Narisha. And I like that you were not scared to talk about failures because a lot of time when we are talking about a new job, we tend to forget how we got there or how sometimes it was really difficult. There was there were days where you were like why did I choose that path and it's good to tell the next generation or people that are now entering this field that it's not going to be bright and sunny every day it's going to be fun it's going to be very like you said very dynamic but there's going to there are going to be days where you're going to regret your choice but the thing is is what are you going to do about this and this uh, this discussion right now is thing it's making me think about a quote of Winston Churchill if I'm wrong that says success is not final and failure is not fatal it's the courage to continue that counts so I think like Geshna said whether it's in the project management or engineering field or any other field that you are on right now I think you just need to stand up stand back up and uh, be true to yourself. So thank you to both of you for sharing all of this with us tonight. And um, on that note, I will open the floor to our audience who maybe have questions or comments or anything that they would like to share, maybe based on one of those questions we were discussing earlier. You can unmute yourself or you can just send us a message in the chat. Thank you. You don't have to be scared. <laughs> There's no wrong answers or no wrong comments. <laughs> if we don't have any questions or comments from the audience, um, Navishal Geshna, do you have any uh, final note or final sentence or quote that you would like to share with us before ending this session tonight? Um, I would like to share something else as well is um, for me, one thing that has always guided me is my life motto, which says, whatever happens, never give up. And it's something that I read on a newspaper one day. And it stayed with me since that day. Like it has stayed with me because one, as a woman to navigate a career in technology in STEAM, it's very difficult because you'll have a lot of people who tell you this is not what a woman can do and you have to really move like above those kind of stereotypes so it's really important to know who you are understand your value and really never give up in on anything on your dreams to always always believe in yourself no matter what the world say I think yes feedback is important but also know from whom are you seeking feedback so that's also a balance to find as well as a as any professional. So yeah, whatever happens, never give up. Thank you, Geshna. I think you're right. Definitely. Navisha, do you have any last comments? 
Yes, I'm very, very grateful to be here and to be part of that discussion. And I'm very proud of Geisha, actually. <laughs> She's very inspiring. <laughs> Uh, is it just before coming here, I took an affirmation card, I just forget it downstairs, and it said that every experience is an opportunity. So it is just right from the spot that at the back, said, every experience is an opportunity to learn and grow. And I think uh, this is what the Afritech is, this is what Afritech Connect is, an opportunity for us women to grow. From who I was to who I am now, Afritech has a huge contribution in transforming me. So I am grateful, very grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, you're gonna make me cry now. <laughs> you're so kind. And really, that was the aim of the Afritech Fellowship. When we created it, that's what we wanted. And we are very, very glad that you are still growing and keep growing. And we are, even though we don't meet often, we are watching you from afar and we can see how much you're growing. And that's very nice. And like you said, uh, Navisha, the Afritech Connect is a part of the Afritech Fellowship, but it's also an, an area where we... It's a space where both the Afritech community and the outside world, so the bigger community, the global community, can just join together and share what you so what you've learned, but also what they they can learn from us, but us as well can learn from them. So I want this, like I said at the beginning, this space is for all of us, and I want you to take as much space as you need. So I would like to say thank you for all of you for joining us on this episode of Afritech Connect. We hope today's discussion on project management has inspired you all. And if you missed the last episodes, episode one, two, and three of the Women's Story Month um, series are all on YouTube, but you can have them. Uh, uh, and this one will be on YouTube as well as from next week. So if you miss any of them, you can watch them on our YouTube channel called Afritech Fellowship. And if you would like to keep having those discussions, stay tuned on our social media platforms because all of the Afritech Connect is not done. So the first series of the Afritech Connect was around was centered around the Women History Month, but it's not done. It will still be going on. And I think the next one will be the second week of April. We will let you know as soon as we have our panelists and we know what we are going to discuss on. So before I close, I see that in the chat, we have a message from Tashila. I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name well. I would like, uh, sorry. Thank you for organizing such a wonderful meeting, sharing your insight. Thank you for being here tonight and you're a wonderful speaker. Wish you more success ahead. Thank you for being here and thank you for uh, listening to all of us tonight. So, also, as this series, as, as I said, of Women History Month is ending, I would like to thank all of the different panelists who shared this space with me on those different conversations. So Anne-Sophie Virasami, Selena Rupnaren, Catherine Remila, Chris, Chitra Gomani, Rihanna Kanden, Jenny Shagaya, Doshana Biebel, Keshnava Govin, and Navisha Goboden. Thank you to all of you wonderful women who are sharing this space with me tonight, but also are part of my community each day. So I would also like to thank all of those people that attended those session with us, but also are reviewing those videos. And until next time, I would like you all to keep innovating and embracing the spirit of exploration. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.